autophagy. It's like the promised land. It's what we're after when we're fasting a lot of times. But it's a little bit confusing because autophagy is this very amazing thing that our body does in terms of like survival of the fittest, right? Like when our body needs fuel and there's no fuel anywhere else, it can break down unnecessary components of tissues and cells to use it as energy. That is a very cool thing. But one of the things that is not always understood is that autophagy doesn't just happen globally. Autophagy happens in localized areas, but also globally. So for example, like during exercise, autophagy can occur in a certain way. Even if you're in a fed state, Right now, I probably have a certain degree of autophagy going on in my left pinky finger, right? Point is, is that it's always kind of occurring, but it really is fascinating when it comes down to fasting because fasting opens up a whole different world of autophagy because it is exacerbated. Now, I don't necessarily agree with the over inflating the power of autophagy that some people really talk about with fasting, but I will say that it is a separate discussion, autophagy in normal functioning life outside of fasting and autophagy during fasting. They're almost two separate discussions that really shouldn't be blurred. Now, autophagy is a very powerful thing. And what I wanna discuss on this video is, does one single calorie disrupt autophagy? The short answer is, in a lot of ways, yes. Okay, and I have a tremendous analogy to break it down. So let's go ahead and get into it. After this video, try this awesome red juice. Okay, Organifi is awesome. I've talked about them before. I've known Drew Cannoli for longer than I've even had my YouTube channel. So I remember when he started Organifi with his greens. And I'm a, I'm a fan of greens and stuff, but the red juice, that stuff is awesome. 13 different berries and antioxidants in it, making it what I consider to be something that is really, really good to use right after you break a fast. But outside of even fasting, just as far as being able to get those superfood nutrients in, I think it's really awesome. And the technology that they've used to really make this a full spectrum beneficial drink is just awesome. You can save 20 percent off using code THOMAS2022. And that link is down below in the description. I've always been a big fan of getting nutrients from berries. Even when I'm doing low carb, I still recommend people eat a small amount of strawberries, blackberries, blueberries, raspberries. They're lower carbohydrate, lower glycemic. And the cool thing is, is that this Organifi red juice uses berries predominantly. So I found that because of the berries, possibly because of the antioxidants, I just get a nice little boost. I feel like if that sort of 2.30 p.m. feeling kind of rolls around, having a scoop of this, which only has a couple of calories, is much better off than trying to go for like a sugary beverage or honestly even something caloric that would otherwise give me energy. It also uses beetroot powder, which I'm a big fan of beets, especially when it comes down to like nitric oxide production within the body. So tremendous if you want to have it a little bit before a workout and get sort of a natural pre-workout effect with a little bit of that nitric oxide vasodilation effect, which is super, super cool. Also, they're using adaptogens in there too. I'm a big fan of adaptogens like reishi, like cordyceps, which are being talked about all over the place now. Anyway, that link is down below in the description. Save 20% off using code THOMAS22 on Organifi Red Juice. So it comes down to three things. Autophagy, mTOR, particularly mTOR C1, and AMPK. Now at first, this video is going to sound very basic and simple, but I want it to be that way because as we increase sort of the scientific subject matter part of it, I want you to be able to follow along, okay? So when we are in a fasted state, we have an increase in what's called AMPK activation. And I've covered this to the nth degree on other videos, but AMPK is an energy sensor. And what that means is like when we are not consuming food, AMPK elevates, activates. When we are exercising, AMPK activates. Because what AMPK does is it recognizes when the energy demand, the demand for energy is greater than what's available. So if I go out for a run right now, even if I had already eaten, if I really exercise hard and my energy demand is greater than what's available in terms of fuel, AMPK is going to activate. Now in the same coin, if I am fasting and I haven't eaten anything, my body's out of fuel. So AMPK activates. AMPK is an autophagy accelerator. 
So here you can see the implication that even exercise can induce autophagy. Anytime we're accelerating the activation of AMPK, we are streamlining the route to the promised land of autophagy. But there's a gremlin that stands in the way. This big ugly gremlin, his name is mTOR, okay? mTOR C1. But before we get mad at this gremlin, let's think about what this gremlin does. He's like a troll. This troll builds bridges. And that's why he gets so mad about the bridges getting crossed all the time, because he builds them. He's a really good builder. mTOR is a builder. mTOR builds memories in the hippocampal region of our brain. mTOR literally signals to build muscle and to replenish and to grow and to regenerate. It is so important. So this troll, although grumpy, he is gardening things and he is growing and he is creating life and he's creating beautiful bridges, okay? AMPK and autophagy are sort of like the lawn mowers and the tree trimmers and the landscapers coming through and he just gets irritated because he's worked hard on building this, right? So what happens is when we are fasting and AMPK is activated and it's trying to uh, instigate autophagy, this mTOR likes to stand in the way, okay? So he stands in the way and he stops autophagy from occurring. Now mTOR only gets activated if he's fed. Okay, so mTOR C1, this troll only stops autophagy if you give him food. So, but all it takes is one calorie to wake him up. It doesn't take a whole lot of food. So that's kind of the point. Now, the another analogy that you can look at is like a domino, and this makes it very simple, is when we are fasting, think of having a bunch of dominoes. And if we knock over that string of dominoes and we get to the end of the domino chain, we've activated autophagy, okay? mTOR removes a domino. Okay, so now the autophagy domino chain cannot reach the end because it's missing a domino. All it took was one calorie to remove that domino. Okay, and the general consensus throughout the scientific community is that that is how it works. Like one calorie, the body can sense one calorie. Any nutrients whatsoever the body will sense, minerals are different, any nutrients the body will sense, and that's that. So the cool thing is, is when you activate AMPK because you're fasting, you are actually inhibiting mTOR. The deeper you get into a fast, the deeper you get into a fast, the harder it is to remove that domino. So that's what's interesting. Early on in a fast, it's actually easier to remove that domino, but the higher that AMPK is activated, then it's harder to remove that domino. And that way, you can keep on getting into autophagy. Also, the more that you are deep in a fast, the more AMPK is activated, the more dominoes you're knocking over faster and faster and faster and faster. So yes, you are aggressively getting into a deeper autophagic flux, the deeper into a fast that you get. But then something interesting happens after about 20 or so hours into a fast. AMPK levels kind of stabilize. Why is that? Well, because now your body has upregulated other processes. It's upregulated something called gluconeogenesis, okay, which is where now your body has started to take energy from your protein, from your fat, from other tissues. So now the body has energy. Even though this energy is coming from your own body, it's still energy. So what happens? Well, the AMPK's job is to sense energy, and it senses energy. So it would be wrong for the AMPK to still be elevated. So the AMPK gets attenuated and it turns down. Does this mean that autophagy turns off? No, autophagy still happens because there's still a survival component. And to a certain degree, autophagy occurs as a result of gluconeogenesis in hepatic liver cells and all of that. So it's happening at a different rate, but AMPK isn't the end all be all. So at the end of the day, those couple of calories that you add from creamer aren't totally harmless. And I'm not trying to scare you. Okay, but those couple of calories do actually stop the autophagic flux. They do stop that response to a certain degree. Now, again, we could get into very nuancey stuff here. What about the one calorie from coffee? Well, I will say just for the sake of this video, because a lot of you drink coffee, coffee is actually autophagy inducing. There are specific polyphenols, specific nutrients within coffee that actually induce autophagy that may counteract the negative effects of the one or two calories from coffee. Same kind of thing with green tea, a half a calorie that you get out of green tea. Well, there's catechins and EGCG, epigallocatechin 3-galate in green tea that can actually induce autophagy and actually activate AMPK. 
Apple cider vinegar, for instance, activates AMPK. It triggers AMPK to be flipped more, even though there's a negligible half a calorie in it. So we do have to pay attention to that at the end of the day. But still, adding things that just blatantly have calories, things like creamer, things like having a tiny bite of something, those things obliterate your fast and they obliterate the autophagic flux that you're seeking out, okay? Now, after you break your fast, there are things that you can do that have a positive impact on in kind of driving autophagy forward after your fast. We'll save those for another day because that's a whole separate video. But as always, keep it locked in here on my channel and I'll see you tomorrow.